to make advancing LGBT rights a top priority. We have done more in the two and a half years that I've been in here than the previous 43 presidents to uphold that principle. The Obama administration defends the human rights of LGBT people as part of our comprehensive human rights policy and as a priority of our foreign policy. For us, family stands at the heart of everything we do. We live for the family. Gay rights are human rights, and human rights are gay rights. We do not want any discrimination against anybody under any condition, whether sexual or otherwise. But we have to state clearly and forcefully that this concept stands against everything we stand for in Africa. And because we have rights, governments are bound to protect them. The issue of sexual orientation in the United Nations human rights system has not yet mustered consensus. All the previous attempts to integrate sexual orientation into existing universally recognized human rights have not been successful. Recently, there was an announcement um, both by the by David Cameron and by President Obama that, you know, they, they are willing to cut off aid to countries who do not recognize LGBT rights. No, we want to object to that as just being manipulation. Don't write manipulation to get us to accept something, a lifestyle which is um, proven to be scientifically unhealthy, a lifestyle which is contrary to the religion and cultures of most of our people. We take great objection to this type of manipulation and we wonder if the American people are aware of what is happening. Okay, so what we're seeing is the LGBT agenda being pushed uh, in, 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 you know, like a carrot stick for aid money. You want aid money, then you must uh, change your laws. These issues of gays uh, and uh, transvites, transsexuals. This is a new form of imperialism, I must say. And it's surprising that the American you know, government is at the forefront of that imperialism. What is amazing is that these countries that are har harassing us, smaller countries, in these countries, the rate of HIV AIDS among um, the homosexual groups there, um, typified as MSMs, that, that rate is increasing and not only so, it is said to be out of control. This is recorded in the scientific journals. The U.S. Center for Disease Control openly admits that Although men having sex with men represent only 2% of the U.S. population, they account for approximately 60% of all new HIV infections and are 44 times more likely to be infected with HIV. And finally, they admit that men who have sex with men are, quote, the only risk group in which new HIV infections have been increasing steadily since the early 1990s. Why then would they want us to accept this type of lifestyle as being a healthy and wholesome lifestyle? One has to seriously question the intentions of President Obama and the other presidents um, across the world. People are saying because we, we have criminalized uh, the LGBT um, activities, we, we do not have good governance. What is governance? In the United States, the states that allow sex, same-sex marriages and the other states that don't allow same-sex marriages. That's democracy. People have chosen. The people in those particular states have determined and the majority have spoken. It's deception. There's no human rights based on behavior. All people are equal, but not all types of behavior are equal. That's blackmail. And uh, it's blackmail on a moral issue, on an issue that uh, you, we are, you know, you, we're forcing governments, African governments, now to go into the village and explain to their people 
You're getting money to build that borehole. You're getting money to you know bring water or electricity into your community simply because you're now going to allow uh, Jane over here to marry Mildred over there. We stand against violence to any body in, in the community. We really we stand against violence. At the same time, it does not mean that we have to accept the lifestyles of others. I'm not saying that I am a, you know, that I don't like uh, homosexuals or lesbians. So I, I love them. They're my brothers and sisters. And, but I do not love or do not like what they do. But what we are emphasizing is that maintain your are aware of we are worth life while we maintain our own. Well, the end result will be deconstruction of what we, of the family system and the family structure in Jamaica. The third and perhaps most challenging issue arises when people cite religious or cultural values as a reason to violate or not to protect the human rights of LGBT citizens. It's against Christian values. And we take, you know, our Christianity differently. It's not like you put on a coat and you can take it off at night. We are Christians through and through, and that's Christianity. We adopted from, you know, the very same people now who are coming in and saying, um, we're not giving you aid money. It usually starts, from what I've noticed, it starts with the repeal of the anti-sodomy laws, but it doesn't stop there. Once these laws are repealed, it gives, it then gives opportunity for, for persons to demand other rights. For, they get to the point where they the, demand marriage or civil unions. Then it gets to the point where um, churches uh, there, there is a demand for these unions to be solemnized in churches. You know, it gets into the educational system. It gets to the point of where criticism of the lifestyle then becomes an offense and people are fined for, for this type of thing. And to come in and to say we must change our laws, it's actually to come in and say what we told you about Christianity, what we told you about uh, Islam is not true then the Bible maybe has to be changed in this case because it's in the Bible and we were told it's in the Bible there's no witchcraft you shouldn't have uh, more than one wife you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that and homosexuality is wrong uh, lesbianism is wrong a man should not be dressed like a woman now to come in and say we have to change what platform really are we on to say that we must change once you say anything remotely critical of the lifestyle in these countries, there is a problem. And so I'm concerned for my own country, which is a highly religious country. You know, I'm concerned about the, the impact that this could have on freedom of speech. I believe countries have got a right to protect themselves, to protect their citizens from these influences that are not of Africa that are not of our communities. I was shocked to realize that some months ago in Pakistan, the U.S. the U.S. ambassador there announced a gay party, you know, a party for all local homosexuals. I felt that that was an affront to the Pakistani people, and I just wondered how insensitive could how could one get? You know, isn't that just a total disregard of the culture of a people. In 2011, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Education issued a report to the UN. This report claimed that children have a right to comprehensive sexuality 